Hello, everyone. Welcome back and Merry Christmas. I'm your host, Diego Claus. <laughs> And I am joined today <laughs> by my helper elves, Gina Versa, and oh guest host, Brandon Swafford. This is going to be a total mess because there's not really a lot to talk about today, but how are you guys doing today? And Brandon, welcome back. Yes, welcome back, Brandon. Good to, good to see and hear you again. Thank you. Year. It's good to be back. It's uh, always a pleasure talking to you guys and chatting about stuff, even if there's nothing going on. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a My, very different Christmas this year, too. Yeah, this is I like, think. it's Zoom yeah. Christmas, so there we go. Um, but I, I'm doing well. I was going to say, uh, it's good to see you guys. I'm Gene Mary Versa. Brilliant. Doing. But uh, I'm feeling very festive because I wore my Christmas uh, scarf just for you, Diego. Didn't Thank you. Thank anything. you. And I'm drinking eggnog, which may or may not be spiked with alcohol, so... Here we go. I'll, I like alcohol. Uh, I just have green tea. But I like tea. So that's, you, you know. That's, well, Brandon, what do you got? What is Brandon drinking? Cheers. Uh, honestly, I think this is whiskey. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure what I poured. <laughs> I just, uh, bear, I'm like, yeah, that looks good. Well, as yeah, long as yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's delicious. Good. And uh, I'm ready to be talking about uh, Venom at uh, Christmas with you guys. There you go. Oh, so yeah, Venom. Venom uh, a very Venom Christmas part two. Uh, the next time we, we do this, we'll have to do a 2.5. We'll have to have you back because you were on for the Venom Christmas in 2018 when that movie came out. Yeah. And we were supposed to have uh, Venom Let There Be Carnage this year, Damn it. which um, I still don't believe is a real film. But um, I, I don't. Yeah. That's, that's is that crazy. really the title? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Woody Harrelson, I'm going to put the picture up here for everyone and it'll be in the PNG image as well. Uh, that's a real set photo. That's that's real. Have you seen this, Brandon? Yeah, I saw the Ronald McDonald uh, yeah. set photo he had. He also, what else mm -hmm. did he look like? He kind of looks well, like Gary Busey, well, like with some red hair going on. Oh yeah, he, he does. He looks yeah, like carrot. Yeah. He looks like carrot top. He does look like. He looks like fucking carrot top, and it's also like how carrot top is now, where carrot top is like carrot top is buff for some reason. Yeah. And Carrot Top would also be a good carnage. You, you don't yeah. even have to have it <laughs> on them. <laughs> it it would have... I mean, I, I think that movie is going to be a ball, whether they intend it to be or not. I think yeah. it's going to be really fun to watch. I kind of can't wait for it. Um, that doesn't mean I want it to be a huge hit or anything. I just... It's a perfect storm for like disaster, and I, yeah. I just can't wait. But we're also here to talk about Christmas things, what we've been up to, uh, and like any holiday traditions for movies or anything like that we, we got going on. Um, it's, it's a little generic now, but like I always watched Die Hard for like over a decade now for Christmas Eve. And um, it is an eternal delight. Uh, everyone should look up the AFI interview with John McTiernan where he's explaining why Die Hard is a Christmas film. And right. why it's like also very anti-capitalist and anti-imperialist. John McTiernan's a crazy person. So if anyone out there knows him, please, I need his contact info to send an invitation to this podcast because he, I love him so much. I, yeah. I, that's the goal for 2021, to have John McTiernan on this podcast. We're also setting goals this episode. That's not what I put in the outline oh, for you okay. guys, but I guess we're doing that now too. <laughs> Sorry. All right. That this episode's going to be a mess, but I love it. For sure. I, I really would be even to... more excited for Venom 2 if John McTiernan was directing <laughs> instead of Andy Serkis. Yeah, I don't know. Andy Serkis is such a good choice though. Like who would have thought he would have like been on Venom 2? Like no one would have. Yeah, that, it's so random, but I, I loved Mowgli a lot. Yeah, so, I actually I'm did like what he does on two years this. Ago, yeah. yeah, Mowgli <laughs> is is like insanely dark, though. I finally did see it. It is like <laughs> it's not like for kids. Like no, I think it's not. supposed to be, but it's also like right. good fucking lord. No. Um, I don't that know. I think where the... Bagheera's chasing him when the wolves are racing with Mowgli, and Bagheera's just chasing all the wolves and like taunting all them, and he, yeah. Mowgli's climbing up the tree. It's so scary. I I think the action is going to be amazing because like he's Andy Circus like revolutionized the motion capture stuff. You know, 
Mm-hmm. So I think I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Like I genuinely think that's going to be very exciting to watch on the big screen. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't know about anything else, but I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but Christmas, Christmas holiday traditions. What do we, what do we got going on this year, fellas? Anything oh. exciting at, from the safety of our own homes, of course. Uh, staying healthy. <laughs> Uh, not that. catching the Rona. That, that's not a plan. Uh, we we always see family, but uh, obviously not not as much this year. Yeah. Uh, so th- yeah. this year is going to be for um, the more I thought about, the more I'm cool with it because like it's going to be a lot different. It's definitely going to be a Christmas no one's going to forget. <laughs> we're all going to have a different experience, and it's not going to be the same tradition over and over. So oh, for, sure. uh, for me, I'm kind of like having the Jack Skellington feel. Well, I was like so tired of the same old thing, but now I was like, oh, this will be a little different. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Jack Skellington character arc is like reversed, I guess. Yeah. What's this? Uh, can you do the song? What's this? What's this? This color? Ever? That one? Or the yeah, one? yeah. That was pretty good. That's a good one. Yeah, you're, you're right up there with Danny Elfman. Thank you. <laughs> good boy. I'll, I'll take that. Okay. Does that mean um, your next short film is going to be a musical? Me? No. No, Brandon. Oh, Brandon, would you do it? Funny you should say that. I do have something oh. with a song in it. Probably won't be a musical, but Ooh. something's coming. Okay. We'll okay. Here we go. We'll right. And maybe don't want to be putting it out here, but we'll see. We'll okay. See. Okay. I, I am looking forward to whatever it is when you do put it out there. I'll say. Yeah. It. Okay. Can't say. But uh, yeah, I don't know, like, uh, like Christmas traditions, um, uh, you know, uh, it's just, I uh, just probably just see my family, my mom and my dad. And uh, I think every Christmas Eve, I watch Die Hard by myself because they don't want to watch it. But around like eight or nine, we tune into uh, NBC's It's a Wonderful Life, which is great, which is a great film with uh, Jimmy Stewart. I want to live again, Bert. <laughs> you know that's that's a fantastic film yeah it's it's great and uh yeah that's what i usually do around christmas just watch those two movies which is such a weird double feature but i think they go together because it's about a guy they're both about men who uh change their ways right yeah uh, you know unfortunately (laughs) diehard has sequels and shows that john mcclain can't really change his ways sorry spoiler alert for Uh, people that haven't fucking seen die hard yeah (laughs) but um (laughs) right right. but then that becomes the point of the sequels and it's a whole thing it's a whole thing actually it's a wonderful life almost had a sequel it's like a blacklisted script if if anyone's heard of it yeah it's, it's about like one of like george bailey's descendants who it's the opposite they're trying to convince him not to exist because it's like he's a terrible person and he makes everyone lives worse Oh. Yeah, that's an actual script somewhere out there. That's if really they'll ever pick that's that up it. instead of remaking it. I like, do think they'll ever pick that up and like it's a reboot. Um, I don't know. Yeah. What would the title be? Your life sucks. <laughs> Your life sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's not wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's not so wonderful. I guess would be it's like not the so one. wonderful life. Yeah. I don't know. That feels like kind of remaking Jaws or The Godfather, though. You know. Yeah. Like someone's gonna try to pitch it to somewhere. But like, would anyone dare? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, this, I don't what, know. What's Spielberg's quote when they try to like remake it? Like Jaws, he's like, I'll, I'll fucking like leave the studio. I'll tear you. Yeah, I think, down. yeah. Yeah. He's like, if you, you know. ever do that to me, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. If you ever do that to me, I'll beat you to death with my film reels or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I could imagine. Because that's like, <laughs> you just can't. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean, they've remade like some like untouchable stuff before. Yeah. But like that, that's all they've been it, doing for the past. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. obviously it, it never works out anyways, right, you know. Right, and I'm right, not someone who right. thinks it takes away from the original film. It's just like why bother? <laughs> like, why are you right. bothering it's with that? Like, <laughs> it's it's just not worth it. Like, what's a good, you know, uh like that Ben Hur remake, it either get or uh was it uh what's the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? That Total movie? Recall. Total, Total recall. recall. It's like Total Recall, yeah. everyone's gonna fucking forget about it until like the next one. Yeah. yeah, and to be fair, I I don't hate the Total Recall remake, but it's just like it's fine, you know. It's and fine. then when you're coming off of Paul Verhoeven's like right. masterpiece, it's like, dude, <laughs> no. Yeah. The don't only do that. thing I remember about the Total Recall remake, I don't even know if I even saw it, but our teacher for math class was obsessed with it. 
I nice. walked, it was our first day at school and he was like hey you guys see any good movies and we're like uh yeah this and he's like y'all see total recall and we're like no and he's like oh my god <laughs> no and i'm like was it bad he's like yeah it was bad that as in good oh my god <laughs> like, Diego's, Diego's, so Diego's talking on air action man He's i like didn't want to get to go to the bathroom because i was like what am i gonna miss and he never did yo <laughs> guys he told recall and he like kept bringing up total recall wow. like in other classes wow. and we're like this sounds nothing like the original it's just crazy that's sad um I was just going to say, like, the only thing I could think of to say about Total Recall 2012 is, like, Kate Beckinsale, innocent. Just oh, yeah. Beal, <laughs> Jessica Beale, not so that. much because she's anti-vaxxer, but Kate Beckinsale, she's, uh, she's, uh, she'd be crowned royalty because she's great. She's, she's a great, great actress. Yeah. She, I feel like she's done, mm-hmm. um, like, Underworld, relatively cheap, great. like, action movies, and really? they kind of get disregarded, but she's, like, a good actress, and she's, like, oh, a yeah. good action star. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 like, it's weird, her, I don't her know, career. It, it's, like, you know how there's dad jokes? Mm-hmm. Are mom jokes a thing? I don't know, I, I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay, because she yeah. has, like, the funniest Instagram. She just, like, posts about her cats. Oh, yeah, her, her Instagram is incredible. Yeah, she just uh, loves like, her I cats. Really, I, I don't follow, like, uh... uh like celebrities and stuff on Instagram. That's just like my personal hub of like solace. But her Instagram is incredible. It's if you oh, yeah. want joy, she's just look like at Kate Beckinsale's Instagram. She's just like a cool, attractive mom, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, she's gorgeous, but like she's also just hilarious. So, yeah, there, cool there's the Christmas gift for everyone. Go follow Kate Beckinsale's Instagram. I'll check it out. And I agree. She, she's a very good actor. I, I totally believe she would be in love with Adam Sandler in Click. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally a woman attractive would fall for it. Yeah. Not an easy sell. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what what else have we been watching this year? Uh, Maybe not ooh. holiday traditions, right. but what have we checked out? Sure. Um, do you want me to go first? Anyone? You can go yeah, first. yeah, go ahead, Gene. Sure. Because yeah, I've been watching um, just really random stuff lately. I want to like talk about because like I'm just like uh, I have like no like sort of like theme. I'm just like watching whatever comes into my head because there's like yeah, fuck it. The, it's the end of the year, especially 2020. There's nothing to do, but I really want to throw like a really good uh, film that I saw recently. Well, two. Um, first one's Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within, and I've never seen like a Final Fantasy movie. I don't know if we uh, said this. This was like on their video game episode, but like Final Fantasy: Spirits Within is uh, such a wild ride. It's like uh, one of the better films. It reminds me a lot of The Matrix. Like it's like the Matrixly regloated, but a lot better, even though I like those movies. And uh, so Final Fantasy Spirits Within, it's from the same writer who wrote Apollo 13, and he directed one of the best like lunar documentaries of, for all mankind. If you've ever seen that, it's on Criterion. But Al, Al Renair is like, he passed away like two years ago, but like, yeah, that guy has like such a weird career. You go from like a working with Ron Howard to like working with Square Enix. Pretty wild. I don't know if you want to check it out, but like uh, it's like a really big cult film and like it uh, costs like 125 million and it made none of that back in the yeah, year. Yeah, I, I could imagine. In 2002. <laughs> um, it also has uh, from uh, The Mandalorian, ming Nai Wan. Oh, awesome. ming Nai Wan? ming Nai Wan. Yeah. yeah, excuse me. Um, and uh, Alec Baldwin, which but yeah um i'd really recommend that everyone go see that i will add that to the list that sounds cool yeah Man, what um, about you brandon oh uh, i was just gonna say uh, oh no, no sorry did you have more gene i, I thought yeah, i just I sounded like two more no it's all right no, no, no. Go, go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah um i finally caught up on all the evangelion rebuilds because i'm a i'm a nerd and i love anime i'm bashfully right. but uh the if anyone knows about neon genesis evangelion there's a there was an anime series that lasted 26 episodes and then another movie that redid the ending because the creator got death threats. Oh my God. And, and uh, they, so the, the ending movie is a, is a remake of the ending of the show and the Evangelion rebuilds are a remake of a remake. They're a remake of the show itself. <laughs> so um, I finally caught up and they're all great and weird. And I really wanted to see it because uh, uh, the creator Hadake Eno, 
uh, he, he's finally coming out with the last Evangelion movie. So these movies started in 2007. Um, and the last movie was in 2012. And it took him eight years to do this one. Because uh, he, went, he went and did uh, Shin Godzilla. So that mm-hmm. stopped him from finishing. Oh, okay. So like, yeah, he's finally coming around to finish it. And uh, I saw a trailer. And uh, if I'd had to risk my life for one movie in a theater, it'd probably be that one. <laughs> Because it's pretty dangerous, but uh, I guess in the overseas where the governments take care of their people and generally give a shit, uh, people could watch that in a theater. So hopefully it comes over here doing with streaming. So nice. Yeah, now, wouldn't that be nice? That'd be nice to. Yeah, wouldn't that be here. nice? If people that's my, Chris- that's my Christmas. That's my Christmas Back up. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be nice? To- <laughs> and then, uh, then I was just gonna say I just been watching a lot of like Studio Ghibli, so like Porco Rosso, I saw for the first time. Oh, that's a! I love that movie. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's really good. Brandon, what else have you been watching? Uh, I've been watching a lot and, uh, it's, but it's kind of sad to go like, you know, obviously it's horrible that we have no theater experiences anymore, at least yeah. not for a long time. <laughs> and yeah, so a lot of the moves have blended together, but one that stuck out to me recently was the sound of metal with a oh, yeah. head when on, did see that? on prime. It's fantastic. It's easily one of my favorite movies of the year. Uh, if anyone who's listening is interested in doing sound design or sound mixing, that's a movie to watch. That's a movie to take notes on because the sound is incredible. And yeah, performances are awesome. He, he's fantastic in it. Uh, Olivia Cook, that's yeah, she's great in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's I think, I think, I think we had a joke um, where Olivia Cook's finally like in a good movie. <laughs> she's such a great actress and she's in like, uh, like, Ready to your mind? What's that? Thoroughbreds is good. Sorry? Thoroughbreds. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Take that back. We'll be a quick I, I, I like Ready Player One. Oh, okay. But yeah. I was going to say, um, Riz Ahmed also in Venom. That's yep. right. Yeah, he is. So it's, it's the guy in Venom. <laughs> He's playing Elon Musk in Venom. Mm-hmm. He is. That, that, vi- that nothing role in that movie. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was just saying that I, I wish they let him keep his British accent for better. Oh, yeah. That would have mm-hmm. been awesome because he has a lovely accent. He yeah, does. Yeah. That movie is not good, but it's like aged really well for some reason because of the memes. Because he plays, like you said, Gene, he plays Elon Musk basically in that mm-hmm. movie. And now everyone rightfully is like, hey, Elon Musk sucks. Yeah, that kind of so asshole. like th- that movie it, it's like a perfect storm for some reason yeah, really and i is. don't i don't get it but it's aged better <laughs> yeah <laughs> so no, I, job, I, agree. Everyone. I haven't seen it since it came out but i have so many fond memories of i i've seen it once and uh, i think it holds up better than i thought just for like the, just for just for the memes and like the performance art of tom hardy like eating fucking tater yeah. tots and like lobsters. a lobster <laughs> a live lobster that's uh, that's my favorite scene. You know what? Oh, no, yeah. I, yeah. I you, hope you, they don't do this. A lot of sequels tend to do this, where they just try to recreate the fit, the best scene from the original and do it better. I hope he doesn't, like, climb into a crab tank or something and starts <laughs> eating crabs or something. You know, the, you know, the lobster scene didn't even bother me that much. The fucking raw, uncooked tater tots, that's fucking gross. That's, that's awesome. All. No, I love that scene, too. It that's made me gross. really want tater tots. No, have you ever like tried like if like if you ever like ate like a raw tater tot? Not saying I have, but like apparently it's like just terrible. It's like the worst thing. Oh, I'm sure I have it's not. Yeah. Unhealthy. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, the uh, yeah, uh, Venom. I was gonna say also, uh, I really liked that Stan Lee cameo in Venom. That was really nice, like one of his last cameos. I know. I, I did like that too. I it was unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, because every MCU movie, I'm, I'm waiting for when he's gonna pop up. I didn't right. think he'd pop up in that, so that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, like hey, <laughs> back. <laughs> but uh, anything else you've been watching recently? You want to highlight or? Uh, uh, Matt Rainey's Black Bottom's pretty good. Oh yeah, 
uh, the last performance of, as far as we know, the last performance of the great Chadwick Boseman. Right. Uh, I didn't know it was based on a play. Uh, so it, it's very in one contained in one room or I almost one room. So, and the trailers made it seem like there were more locations, but, but there's not. Uh, but yeah, awesome performances, really well acted. And uh, yeah, and I think he's gonna get uh, an Oscar. Uh, I think he'll be the third person to win a posthumous Oscar. Yeah, either that or uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard a lot of good buzz from that. And um, I think he'll either get nominated and win for that or uh, uh, the Five Bloods. Yeah, I think where, so. Where he's yeah, where he's got like that supporting actor on lock for That's, that movie. Basically, I really so. hope he wins like for either one, uh, particularly the Five Bloods, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. he should have been nominated for at least 42, and I think he should have been up for Civil War, because he steals the show in Civil yeah. War. I don't, I, I don't know about that, but, like, he he is so good. Like, he was so good, and, I mean, talk about, like, just gone too soon, you know? Just such a tragedy. What an incredible actor. Like, yeah. he felt like he was just getting started. And oh, yeah. Even, like, I, I didn't love 42, but, like, my God, when you see him in that movie, like, mm-hmm. that's that's someone on par with like our, our greatest movie stars ever. He just had charisma like all over. There was, there's no real comparison that it is so sad that he is no longer with us. Yeah. No. What, what really could have been like in the later half of his career. You know? Yeah. And I mean, like he, one of the, he became one of the biggest stars in Hollywood in like the last five years alone. Mm-hmm. So fast. Right? Yeah, and I think he even elevates like not so good material. Cause uh, like 21 box, you know, yeah. not the not the best movie, but like he really elevated that. Is that the Bridges one? That was the oh yeah, what was I saying? Twenty one Bridges. Twenty one. Yeah. Okay, excuse me. Yeah, it's a, it, it's the same premise. We all know it. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. He was good in it. That's all that matters. Too much. Sorry, too much. Like eggnog. So, no, it happens. It happens. Yeah, but um, yeah, you know, he's yeah. Good that. Yeah, really. Uh, I just watched. Um, uh, the King of Jazz, which is an old uh, two-strip Technicolor film that I've been trying to track down forever. I saw the Criterion version of it, gloriously, like, incredible restoration. Um, it's kind of like Fantasia, the Disney Ooh. Fantasia, but for, like, the old pop swing music. It's not really jazz, like, as we understand it now. It's just, I guess, it's, it's one of those labels that was easy to put on other stuff back then, but I fell in love with it. It was as good as I hoped. Um, I saw Seaberg, the Kristen Stewart oh, song yeah. role about a, a oh, yeah. Joan she's, Seaberg. Yeah. Um, it's not she's great, great, but she's great in it. She's good in it, and Anthony Mackie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that director, he's like, he started as like a, a play director. And like, he's got like something. He did another movie like two or three years before called Una that oh. I, I wasn't crazy about either, but like the performances are really good. So he's like, I, maybe he needs like a co-director or something because he's got something there that I, I like. I'm rooting for him to 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 pull out like a real good movie, but it's it's not really happened yet. Yeah. Uh, also, plug for uh, the youth critic. I joined our buddy Kale Smith uh, to talk about Crimson Tide, the Tony Scott film from the '90s with Denzel Washington and Gene Hackman. Uh, have you guys seen Crimson Tide? I have, I have not. I have not. Oh yeah, Gene, you got to watch Tony Scott, Tide, right? Dude. Yeah, yeah, Tony Scott. It's so fucking good. Tony it's Scott. like, yeah, it's like that, uh, Crimson Tide and um, The Hunt for Red October. Those are the two best submarine films. Whichever one you saw last is the best one. That's how good <laughs> they are. I agree. Um, yeah. I agree. Uh, I, I Better love than The Yellow ones. Submarine by The Beatles. Oh, yeah, but that one, I guess you got to be on drugs for. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> I, trip, though, if you take an edible. It's a bad trip from what I heard. You just have to you just have to moderate, moderate. Right. I guess so. Which is something that I would say if we were encouraging that, but we are not encouraging that on this uh, show, obviously, yeah. because we're adults. And the last thing I want to plug because I, I I've been kind of just like plowing through stuff this year. Mm-hmm. Um, Skylines by uh, Liam O'Donnell, the, the sequel to Beyond Skyline. Again, I brought it up on the Mandalorian episode, but it's an awesome sci-fi action B movie extravaganza. Um, Go yeah. check it out. It's it, it shows what you could do with a, a lot of passion, even if you don't have the biggest budget. It scratches that sequel itch that you, you never got from the Pacific Rim or Independence Day sequels. 
And um, on a much smaller note, yeah, I know, Brandon, you, you would love Beyond Skyline and Skylines. All right. Uh, but the, the best movie I saw this year was Nomadland by Chloe Zhao, who did The Writer and is currently in post-production for Marvel's The Eternals. Um, it's an incredible film about post-economic depression and anxiety America and trying to find your way in a, in a world where maybe kindness and humanity aren't as uh, public as they should be. And it's kind of about yeah. extending all the branches in that way. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a really, really great film. Frances McDormand will get an Oscar nomination. Don't know if she'll win, but she's getting that nomination. Yeah, um, It's terrific. And I know it's not available everywhere now. They had the online screening stuff that they were doing this year. Uh, it's too bad that it's not like directly available because I think right. it would be much bigger. Yeah. I think so. It's bad that theaters aren't open here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, totally get it. I'm not even like condoning uh, theaters being open. Oh, um, I don't want theaters like, open with this thing going around. Oh, yeah, totally, <laughs> yeah. totally, totally. Yeah. I, I just wish the thing was gone and we could go back. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know, like yeah, just to I mean, just to clarify, I don't want to go to a no, theater you're, right now. You're, you're totally good. You're totally good. It's just like it is very frustrating, you know. Like I saw a commercial for Monster Hunter, uh, and I was like, I want to see Monster Hunter because it's yeah. in a theater, and I want to see monsters. That's oh, how yeah. bad I'm like aching for it, you know. Yeah, like yeah, a too. Paul W. S. Anderson movie. Like you're aching for that. Like anything. Yeah, dude. I, I just want yeah. some some monster schlock right. also i because i couldn't i haven't seen monster hunter yet i was like i never played it i should download it it was on sale for like 20 bucks on steam mm. a really <laughs> fun game i recommend everyone get monster hunter world <laughs> there you go um i was yeah. gonna say uh yeah um you know and it's at like some of them are at like a drive-in too but it's just like you know i would love to see that like an imax you know mm -hmm. i don't know if i don't think there's a, like a imax drive-in <laughs> no that's a no. novelty in itself but yeah that you know that'd be that would have been nice that would have been nice yeah. would have been nice yeah. uh shifting gears to some other nonsensical topic for today since it's christmas we have to ask the question mm -hmm. is venom 2 going to be a christmas movie i hope so god i hope so i hope so <laughs> i really really hope so yeah. i will uh, going back to that my lobster tank thing i wouldn't mind if like he crawls into like a jar of gingerbread or something <laughs> <laughs> he just starts gnawing on gingerbread or reindeer oh yeah that would be he just <laughs> eats a whole reindeer he just eats a whole reindeer in front of our eyes <laughs> and the other reindeer just watching him are like oh yeah glad it wasn't us and they just walk on with their day well that that was one of the things i liked about the first venom like unironically is that like tom hardy just looks like shit by the end of that movie you know yeah, he really like does. he just progressively looks worse and worse as the movie continues yeah and it's like i want to do that and then have him like just crash through like a big shopping mall or something like that and just scare the shit out of the kids there or something yeah like that would be hilarious you yeah, know exactly that would be funny i i really you know i really hope like you know um Maybe the Christmas thing could work because it's like I don't know, uh, I don't know how serious I'm at that this with that. Like, but if anyone's read like the recent like Venom comics, um, like all of like the stuff with Eddie Brock and his like family because uh, he has like a lost son that he never knew about with Anne, whatever her last name is, and like his he's a strain from his actual dad because his dad's terrible. Like. I think that all that family stuff would definitely work in with the holidays if anyone uh, wants to read the latest Venom, but I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> I, I haven't gone back into comics yet. I'm, I'm making my way there. But I, you heard I, it's yeah. good. You I, heard I, it. From you, yeah. yeah I've only heard from you. Would you think Tom Holland's going to be in Venom too? Yeah. Not right. a big role, but I think he's going to be in it. I, what, I if, what if this is how they bring them in? Like, if, if Venom 2 is a Christmas movie, let's say, like, Peter Parker, let's say Santa may exist in this world, and Aunt May hasn't told him that Santa doesn't exist. Sorry, 12-year-olds who are listening to this episode. <laughs> but he, he wakes up, he hears something, Santa! And then he comes down and sees it's Venom going on the tree, eating their stuff. He's like, you're not Santa! And then, ha! And oh, that it. would be incredible. 
Oh, that's the that, showdown. That would have been awesome. <laughs> no, um, that I, that's probably going to be more exciting than thing the movie has to offer. Right. Than whatever I, they do. I really, I, I feel like I have a really good feeling that Tom Holland's probably going to be in it, but I really want to wait. I guess till whenever Morbius comes out, just to see the context of like that Vulture cameo, like what the deal with that is, because everyone, everyone kind of in credits, dude. In credits yeah. yeah. But like everyone's kind of forgotten. Do you remember like before the pandemic when that was like the biggest moment in Twitter? Like yeah. the I wonder if they reshot the scene where he cuts his hand and the bats fly at him. If people oh. are <laughs> that's a yeah. pretty <laughs> that's almost how with this thing all started. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Yeah. I mean, some someone ate a bat, I don't know. But yeah, yeah I, don't, that, I don't know. That's a cursed movie too, but not like in a fun way. It's just cursed because yeah. Jared Leto's a creep and yeah, there's a do. pandemic with bats. It's like, agree. who's going to want to watch that now? Who, who yeah. wanted to watch that before? No God, one. I don't know. Some I, I'm people. more interested in the press uh, <laughs> of the behind the scenes details of like how he was method acting to play a vampire. Yeah. If he was like biting people on the set or like hanging upside down. <laughs> Doing some fucking creepy thing. Do you remember like when he's a... Uh... When he found out about coronavirus because he was in like a a retreat yes. with all his like weird cult followers. Yes, not, I did I his not known, sex cult. His non-sex I, cult, yeah. Yes. Oh my god, this is all coming together. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, that movie is just everything around that and your letter right now is just like the the most absurd it's like shit the, ever. Yeah, it's the uncanny valley of like 2020. <laughs> That, yeah i don't know i mean but but to that cameo like i think they're gonna do that thing uh where like agents of shield and um uh, the mandalorian kind of do where it's like oh it's like it's connected but only we're gonna acknowledge it the main stuff isn't really gonna acknowledge it you know it's connected yeah. but not real but not real you know exactly. yeah like tom holland will be in a sinister six movie but the Sinister Six won't be in Spider-Man movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because of branding. That's my thought on it. Yeah. I don't know. We'll All the Spider-Man 3 news, I'm wondering who isn't in this movie. <laughs> has anyone, <laughs> yeah, every time tally? I look at my phone, it's just like, oh, this, oh, okay. This guy's in this movie. Okay. <laughs> right. Because so far it's Doctor Strange, Daredevil, Doc I guess. Fox. Jamie Foxx. Right. Electra. Uh, Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Toby Andrew, McGuire. Right. Kristen Dunst. Yeah, it's giving Diego a headache right now. It is. Well, here's the th- I, I used to like rage tweet about this, right? We all were fucking nerds, of course we did, because we're losers. But like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm I think I've just completely started to divorce myself from that, where it's like I probably won't watch it in theaters, you know? Like I, I think I'll what? check it out eventually. No, you just like, no. I, I, no. I, yeah. I <laughs> you you I probably will. I respect but, you, like, I love I, you. But you will watch it in theaters. You're gonna do I don't it. Know. Like I'm game. so you'll not come, interested. You'll come crawling back. <laughs> no, that's I don't what, know. That's I, what I Kevin Feige like, said. I didn't like Far From Home enough to the point where I was like, oh, they yeah. need to have like a perfect film to bring me back. Right. That was before mm-hmm. all of this stuff started well, coming out. And I was, now I'm just like, yeah. I'm not. I'm not getting a movie that interests me. I, right. I've come to accept that. There's no right. reason to just rage about it. You know, it's just that's like a yeah. good. That's a good, very zen thing to do. That's fair. You're but very at peace. Um, from my experience, I hated Batman v Superman with a passion. Yeah. Yet, I still saw Justice League, and I'm still going to watch the shit out of the Snyder Cut once. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I can't I'll, wait for the Snyder Cut. I, I didn't like any of those, and I'll probably end up seeing because there's nothing to watch. But it's like hell a bad yeah. relationship that just keeps coming back. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I can't get enough I, of you. Right. I was just going to say, like, I had such a mixed response to Far From Home because I don't know if anyone remembers, but like uh, me and Diego pretty much had the same opinion. Like, it's kind of bad. Yeah, I, I, I bad. do not like I think that's the worst Spider-Man movie. Right. You know what? But the funny thing is with Far From Home, like there are some like aspects of that movie I really, really enjoy. Like, I love all mm-hmm. the teenage the teenager romance stuff with like Peter and MJ. Like, I like half of that movie. But I really hate the rest. Yeah, I'll tell I'll tell you I what, because now Brandon, I feel like you have you have a take Brandon. on on this too. And this episode again, it's all over the place. Merry Christmas, and I I do want to hear your take on this, Brandon. But like for me, it convinced me that Spider Man in Europe, a story like that on the big screen, could totally work. 
I sure as shit did not want to see that for his second solo outing. Yeah. When the previous film was like, I'm going to stay in New York because that's, I got to be an independent Spider-Man. I got to be my mm-hmm. own hero. He could, even if you have to do like the, I got to get over Tony Stark bullshit, whatever. Right. It makes so much more like sense and context for him to sort that out at home than to go on vacation when he's supposed to be like a working class stiff hero, you know? Yeah. Like whatever the school can pay for it because he has really good grades or some shit. Like I just want to see them explore the stuff they set up in Homecoming because I really liked Homecoming and I didn't get maybe, that. Maybe they will in Spider-Man 3. No, they, they clearly oh, are not. Everything <laughs> else they're exploring. <laughs> There's no way. If yeah. They have um, to make the best movie ever to do all right. of this, you know? I was, I was going to say, so uh, my pitch for that movie, if anyone's listening like Kevin Feige, is I guess Hannibal Burgess the infamous landlord is coming back as the teacher. And if they create the, the rent scene from Spider-Man 2 with Hannibal, who is a notorious, terrible landlord, I'll give them all the props. You, you can't recreate the rent scene. The, the rent yeah. scene's too good. Yeah. The rent, give me rent is like prime. Mm-hmm. No, ha- Hannibal, Hannibal Burris, he's such I a- I love Hannibal Burris. I yeah, but you don't, wanna, you don't wanna be a tenant of his because he'll kick you out. <laughs> He likes kicking uh, out his, his tenants because he's a landlord. But it, well, wasn't he the coach in Spider-Man? Yeah, he was, a co- he was Coach Wilson. Yeah. He, is, he described the role as, I'm one of the dumbass teachers that doesn't know he's Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he described that character. Well, Brent, Brandon, what are your thoughts on all this spider nonsense? Um, I, I love both Homecoming and Far From Home. I love Homecoming much more. Yeah, uh, put that there, but I, I really enjoyed Far From Home. I mean, I, I don't think it's perfect. I, I think the best Spider Man movie is Into the Spider Verse, easily. Yeah, probably. Um, also a Christmas movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah. holiday movie. It totally, yeah. Is. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I the only take I really have with it is that like I, I think they made Peter a little dumber by just giving Mysterio the glasses. Oh, yeah, that was. That was uh, so I, I, poorly, I, I, poorly, poorly written. They, they teenaged him up a little bit too much. Where like he was like, no, no, here you go. What the bag what happened to me? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, he wasn't an idiot in Homecoming. He was just like a teenager. Here he's like, he has no brain. But then he's like, oh, I'm super smart also. And I don't know. I, I do not fuck with that movie yeah. at all I apart mean, from like the, the little things like the moments of inspiration but right yeah hey uh you looking for just like past- yeah a brain fart of like yeah, yeah. i do really dumb are things you, a lot yeah. of times are you looking I, forward I dumb things so <laughs> you never know yeah. yeah are you are you looking forward to fantastic four also by john watts here here's I, my hottest take or here brandon no. you know what go ahead go ahead i am uh, I, I'm not in love with the John Kaczynski, Emily Blunt. Oh, I yeah. think people. No, thank you. We're, art we're... They've already made up their minds. Like that's I, it. That's all. I, I like John Kaczynski and Emily right. Blunt. Fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, uh, my top choice is still John Cho for Mr. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Yeah, he's uh, he was uh, Mr. Sulu too. So like, you know, it really fits like that explorer sort of mold of Mr. Fantastic. I could see that. Oh, yeah. Even though, like, I'm like, I know, I, I don't know if it's like a shame to say, but I, I really like the John Krasinski casting choice. Well, Krasinski, I think we've even talked about it on the show. Krasinski <laughs> and Emily Blunt, like, they're like the Benedict Cumberbatch casting, where it's like, oh yeah, it's a good actor, it's a good role. Okay, moving on. Like, there's nothing really to get from that besides, like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a good fit. Okay, like uh, they'll do good. They will not be bad in the roles. Uh, but For it's sure. just like. That's not exciting or interesting to me, you know? Right. It's not the right. worst thing in the world. It's just like, eh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and the, the hottest take I have is that even though I'm very much like conflicted with the MCU Spider-Man, I, I like John Watts. I think he's a good director. Uh, Far From Home yeah. had to serve yeah. like a million masters, you know? Yeah, Cop And I, I think that, I, I love Cop Car. I think Clown, Clown is Clown the good. best version of an It movie that we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not very fun to watch though. No, um, it's, a, it's a dark, depressing movie. But you know, it comes it's from, really it, gross. Yeah, yeah, it comes from a very a lot of inspired choices though. Yeah, uh, his place, his his cinematography in Far From Home, uh, 
has a real like kinetic eye to it that Homecoming didn't have. Like I way prefer Homecoming, but like Far From Home, there's right. like images that stuck with me. Uh, so I, I think he'll do good if he can make Fantastic Four like his own, you know? Yeah, I that's, think that's, so too. I'd be surprised if it was bad. That's right. all I'm saying. Yeah, I would be. Oh, oh. Man. There you go. That's that's my nice thing for the those movies for a little bit. There you go. <laughs> uh, holiday, uh, holiday cheer. Yeah, that's my holiday cheer. I like John Watts. Good job. Merry Christmas, also, John. He, he, he made a funny uh, video. Well, it's not funny. It's just YouTube poop like a decade before he made Spider-Man. And it's really? like, yeah. And I'll put it right here. I'll send oh it to you God. later after this, Brandon. It's sure. just like, it's like a vine. He made like the original vine. And it's that incredible. That gives me so much hope John, that John. I might have a future. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that it's true. Editing dumb stuff, have a future to make. Yeah, movies. literally like 10 years before he directed Homecoming. And it's, wow. it's so stupid. I love it. I love that that can happen, you know? Yeah. John Watts, the creator of Vine. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. No, I mean, R- YouTube, RIP, YouTube. RIP Vine. I miss Vine. Vine, I Vine had a lot I of wish creatives. Vine, okay, I'm going to throw out a hot take. Vine, TikTok. That's not a hot take. Vine is way better than TikTok. TikTok, TikTok goes on way too long. Yeah. Vine is smart because you gotta like do your joke in seconds. You gotta make yeah. up your joke in seconds. It's like an so, some. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I don't, I don't, I don't like hate TikTok. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I just think Vine would force you to be more creative because of the minimal amount of time you had. You know, yeah. like I, I did prefer it for sure. Yeah, and you know, uh, you you probably didn't get spied on either on Vine. Oh yeah, that's a whole other thing. I mean, yeah. we're I, I don't like judge anyone for using it though, because it's like we're getting spied on by everything, you know, on Facebook right. to Instagram. That's probably Twitter. Zoom. Zoom is probably Zoom. Yeah, yeah. We're this probably feed. spied on right now. We're yeah, definitely being spied on down. Right now when people are watching this on YouTube. So yeah. yeah, I have like one more topic we're supposed to talk about in the show today, where I was like, is the Venom sequel going to be a sequel to Cats? I hope so. Nothing could be a sequel to Cats. I don't know why I wrote that. Nothing can even match that level uh, of craziness. All right. But how about this? What about Tom Hardy as Rum Tub Tug? Rum Tum Tugger? Uh, well, Tugger the the Rum Tum Tugger is a curious cat. I like Jason Derulo as Rum Tum Tugger. If it was Tom know. Hardy as James Corden's cat, I'm 100% behind Oh, you. my God. Just take James yeah. Corden out of everything, put Tom Hardy in it. Yeah. James yeah. Corden's yeah. fucking annoying. James yeah. Corden just seems like the biggest asshole. I'm sorry. Maybe he's like the sweetest guy and he was just being bullied, but all like the funniest tweet I ever saw. I don't even know if it's my lane, so I might cut this, right. but like where someone was saying, like, does James Corden seem homophobic to anyone? <laughs> like, not like that he is homophobic right. to gay people, just that his very existence is like anti like gay. <laughs> and I don't yeah. know. I just thought that was like well, a really weird thing. Yeah. And I also just... probably true. I, I just remember that James Corden had to have an intervention from his family because, like, all the fame got to his head. I'd have really? a what from his family? Like, his family had to stage an intervention to stop really? him from acting terribly. Wow. Yeah. I believe I be- that. I be- we well, said it at the same yeah. time. I believe yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no. He's like, they're like, we're tired of having you do like karaoke car ride or whatever he does. <laughs> yeah, stupid as shit. Um, um, yeah, get 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 him out of movies. Who's who's doing this? Stop yeah. it. Sorry, not to judge someone's livelihood, but he's already wealthy enough. Stop him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get a job. He already has an, a gig. He doesn't need all these other gigs. Right. Yeah. Stay away from us, James Corden. <laughs> get a job. <laughs> Leave us alone. Leave us alone. <laughs> and that's the, that's how we're going to end this Christmas cheery episode, I think. Unless yeah. anyone has any other yeah, random James topics you want to throw um, out. Who's on our naughty list? James Corden. James Corden yep. yeah. any, any good like Christmas movies we could just throw out at the last minute? I'm going to go, because it's my background, which is the Nightmare Band from Emma Doggeter's Jug Band Christmas. Everyone should see that. It's on Amazon Prime. It's the best Christmas Muppets movie. Better than the Muppet Christmas Carol. I'll say that. Ooh. Yeah. Because it's I just about, agree. it's about what we should be thinking for Christmas. It's a family. It's like a son and a, and a mother. And it's like, it's like, it's basically a ripoff of that Magi, Gift of the Magi, where people exchange gifts and they exchange the stuff they need. But it's about 
just two family members who love each other during the holidays trying to help each other out. And uh, Frank Oz is in it. You know, it's another great Frank Oz thing. So, you know, throwing that out there. I like nice. that. Yeah. How about you, Brandon? Uh, I've never not been in the mood for Elf. Uh, okay. <laughs> watching that every year. Um, I think we're, we're going to watch it tonight. Uh, my mom said she's never seen it before, but she definitely has. So sure. it'll be fun to pretend like she's never seen it before. <laughs> Uh, another bad, fun Christmas movie, uh, if you guys have access to Apple TV Plus. Oh, I, I do, I do, actually. Uh, watch the Mariah Carey Christmas special because it's <laughs> horrendous and hilarious, and I love every minute of it. <laughs> and it she's it, avoiding the camera at all times. Where there are times when she should be looking, but she's, she's doing a lot of this, and it's, oh, man. it's wonderful. Is it very campy? It's very, very campy. It knows exactly what it is. Billy Eichner's in it. He's a joy. Tiffany Haddish is the narrator, and that's as enjoyable as you would imagine it being. And well, that yeah. sounds like a Christmas miracle. That's why I love Mariah Carey, like sincerely, yeah. because I, I she's like, like yeah, she's but she's like bombed publicly with her vocals before. She's yeah. like she she's not a hundred percent like the best artist ever, but when she nails it, she, I mean, there's a reason why. All I want for Christmas is you tops the charts every Christmas season, right? Like I played every year. I'm a I'm a fan. I'm a fan for sure. Yeah. Uh, a Christmas movie for me. Um, I'm just looking at my letterbox because I have my Christmas themed favorites right now. Uh, Sean Baker's Tangerine, the film that was shot on an iPhone. Oh yeah. Uh, I saw that. Which is uh, yeah, it's it's a heartwarming story in a non heartwarming environment about how hard it is to be in. LA on Christmas Eve sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's a little more complicated yeah. than that, but that's probably the, the, the easiest logline for that. Um, Shane Black's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which also kind of taps back to Gene and I's conversation in November. Uh, Tokyo Godfathers by Satoshi Kon and Batman Returns. Those are kind of the four I want to revisit before the holiday season's over. And on yeah. that note, Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. Where can the people find you and uh, any other plugs you might want to toss in there? No, always a pleasure. Thank you, as always, for having me. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at B Money Rules because I'm making videos again. Oh my God, hey. we're back! You know it. Hey. We're back in business, baby. You can check out my my Grinch uh, trailer mashup with Loki. That's funny, uh, right. and you'll be seeing more stuff there soon. And also, you can check me out on Instagram and Twitter at B Swaps. And thank you guys for listening and watching. And have a merry Christmas and stay inside. Yes, Damn. please do. <laughs> yes, yes, all of that. And thank you again for joining us. Always good to talk to my friend. Can't wait to actually hang out in person again. Oh, yeah. Hopefully sooner than later. We got a vaccine, baby. Uh, Gene, where can the people find you? Uh, yes, you could find me on Twitter and Instagram on Gene9892 is my handle. And of course, you could follow me at the Diego Crespo. Check out the Waffle Press on Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, and Patreon. You can get early access to, to stuff like the Legend of Quarter retrospective in the coming weeks. Um, check out the rest of the last Airbender retrospective. We went over the M. Night Shyamalan movie. If you haven't seen that yet, sorry, it is actually that bad, but it's uh, you feel bad about it being bad. Um, oh, and we're doing a cat's commentary. So stay tuned for that, uh, oh, yeah. to the Patreon for that, because that'll be. Oh, that'll be doing it. he's doing it completely sober. I am. There's no way. I'm don't scared do that to. to, to no, I love cats. I you love, love it. You I like, love he it. He has a cat? Has your cat has your cat seen cats? Wednesday's too good for that. She doesn't need that uh, in her she, life. She like she just leaves the room. She's like, yeah, she's like, fuck this. I'm gonna go yell at the mailman. You people. Yeah. Like, you yeah. Sick bastard. <laughs> yeah, no, Wednesday doesn't put up with shit. But uh thanks again, everyone. This was a lot of fun. Stay safe, stay inside, wear a mask. Get that vaccine whenever you can, whenever it's available to us. Please, please. We have been professionally unprofessional and Merry Christmas.